Look at that stick. That's a great stick, bud. It's a little chilly, and I don't want to get out of my cozy sleeping bag. <laughs> Let's go ride bikes. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Beautiful day. I think it's going to be hot. The locals were saying it's going to be in the 90s, which is, which is okay with me. I like hot weather. Here we go. Sun is rising. It's heating up. It's time to ride bikes. No crashies. No, no flatties. No, no whammies. Look those birdies. Cows. There he goes. Yeah. Go for it. Hey. Mira, you want to herd those cows, don't you? Not today. Whenever possible, I like to pick some sage and keep it for good luck on my bike rides. But all, not all my bike rides go through areas with sage, but we just found a nice open meadow with lots and lots of sage. Smells so good. It's time for our morning cliff bar break. And I was just telling John, it just feels so good to be out here. It always feels good to be out here, no matter the circumstances, but after quarantine and being locked down as a single guy, I didn't have interaction with many humans or dogs. And it's something you take for granted. You know, like you just figure every day you're gonna interact and talk and hang out with people. But for uh, a couple months there in Boulder, I was just chilling on my own in my apartment watching a lot of Netflix. And uh, you know, I would see my mom, but we would stay distanced. I would sit on her back deck and uh, just being out here is just such a great sense of freedom. She wants to play fetch already. Go get it. John, what did you do during lockdown? <laughs> what did I do during lockdown? I was never really locked down. I was in Mexico when the things initially went off and I was taking Spanish classes and, and uh, exploring Guanajuato. And uh, since then I've been riding on the road and the trails from place to place. So, um, yeah, I've had a unique experience during this, this time. Yeah. So, definitely uh, physically distanced from people, but not socially isolated. So that, that's, yeah. that's been nice for me. And while we're here, I want to show you something that is just interesting and weird. Every single road sign that I've ridden by in Montana has bullet holes in it. And I just, I don't get it. It's like, you're driving along and you're like, honey, pull over, I wanna shoot that sign. <laughs> it's like, why? Why ruin all these things? I think it's dumb. I'm just gonna say it, it's dumb. Stop shooting signs. Hi, Mira. Look at that guy sort of alien thing. So we were riding by this house and out of the corner of our eyes, we're like, oh, an elk. This one's made with a bunch of old horseshoes, it looks like. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, I like that one a lot. It's like a big pack mule or something. The detail in here is really impressive. That's enough of the trespassing. I need to, need to keep on moving now. All right, we're rolling into Butte, Montana, home of Evil Knievel. Here we go, it looks pretty big. And if you're wondering what happens with Sweet Mirror when we go inside stores, she just sits in the basket and hangs out. 
She's such a good dog. We're outside of a grocery store here in Butte. We've both done our shopping, but the interesting shopping is the dog food. You gotta have dog food. Mira doesn't eat sticks, although she has them in her mouth all the time. All right, John, what'd you get from Mira? Got her some uh, kibble, a two kg bag. Is that so much? Yeah, four pounds or so. And I'm just transferring it over to a, a dry bag, and then that'll go into her custom porcelain rocket food bag. This pretty much looks like our shopping. Tortillas are easy to travel with, peanut butter, cheese, bars. John really likes ranch dressing. Some apples. Yeah. Healthy stuff. Yeah. Oh, real healthy stuff. The gold bears. Oh, you gotta, you have, gotta the... have the bears. Yeah. All of my food goes in this one. And it's bulging right now because I just filled it up. And then I have up here, instead of a water bottle now, I have lots and lots of bars, easy access. And if you're wondering, this is where I keep the drone and the controller and some other electronics up here in my front bag. The tent is tucked in right here under all the brake cables and all my camping equipment and clothes. This is the, the bear spray, extra belt, and my flip flops, and then just some knickknacks, cords, cables, tools. Oh, we've got a serious tunnel here. This is the real deal. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Sing along with us. Here we go. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, 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 ole. Oh, that was a good one. We have made it 7,250 feet of elevation and also check it out. You see this trail right here, this walking trail? This is the CDT, the Continental Divide Trail. This is what all those through hikers do from New Mexico all the way to the border of Canada. And this trail crisscrosses our route here and there and we've seen backpackers with those big heavy backpacks and uh, it's pretty cool. Everybody's out here doing their own adventure. Maybe someday I'll do a hike like that. Although those hikes take like five or six months to, to do and compared to a bike trip where you can get it done in a month and a half. You know, biking is pretty slow. Life at 15 miles an hour, I call it. You get to see the world at a slow pace, but walking, even slower. Maybe someday I'll do something like that. You know, I've done some treks in the Himalayas, which are pretty awesome. And again, another sign all shot to hell. <laughs> what is the deal, people? All right, we're going to learn a little bit about the Continental Divide. Beneath your feet runs one of the most geographically significant places in North America, the Continental Divide. Perched along the backbone of some of the highest western mountains, it separates waters that drain into the Pacific Ocean from those that drain into the Atlantic. The Continental Divide National Scenic Trail traces this backbone, spanning 3,100 miles between Mexico and Canada. Oh, baby. I've been waiting for this all day, and it's laundry day. I gotta wash my clothes. Oh boy, that's cold. Oh, that's cold. Woo, feels so good though. So you might wonder how I dry off all of my clothes after jumping in water, and I decorate a tree, like Merry Christmas time. And at the top, of course, I put the star, the chamois. Is it the end of the day? Is it time to play fetch? Go get it! And look at our beautiful campsite here in the trees. I first learned about Nutella when I lived in Sweden and I've been a fan ever since. It's like eating a French crepe, right? Mmm. And for the main course today, surprise, surprise, I have refried beans 
but also hatch green chilies from New Mexico. And John's eating peanut butter and jelly tortillas. Mm -hmm. No jelly, just peanut butter. Oh, while waiting for his soup to let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, looking good. Come on. Bedtime. Come. <laughs> Mira, time to go to bed. I know it's light out and it's hard to sleep when it's light, but there's too many mosquitoes. So she's, over there. she sleeps right in there with you, huh? Oh, yeah, get over there. That's it. Lay down. Yeah. Little pre-bed cuddles. Good night, guys. Good night, Ryan. Good night, John boy. I really love my tent because there's always a good view. Check it out. That's what I get to look at tonight and tomorrow morning. And I've been in Montana now for a whole week. It's crazy. In a lot of ways, it seems like longer. In some other ways, it seems shorter. I've ridden already almost 500 miles, 500 pretty tough miles. Most days gaining about 5,000 feet of elevation. And uh, my body still feels good. And my spirits are good. I'm really excited to be with John and Mira. And I'm really, I'm loving the state, I'm loving the adventure, and I'm loving the freedom of just being out here. Makes me very happy. So, I'm going to go to bed now, safe from all of the mosquitoes. <laughs> Good night.